Hello and welcome everyone. This is Eugene Nagavieski from Enphoto Studio. We have another tremendous interview in store for you today. All the way from Falkirk, Scotland, I welcome you CEO and founder of Muttley Snaps Professional Pet Photography Studio, Ewan Chen. Hello Ewan. Hi. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. Wonderful. Now, Ewan is a tremendous pet photographer who works out of Falkirk, Scotland. Uh, his work is highly regarded not only by the clients he serves, but those other professionals in his industry. He has a special affinity for dogs, but he's happy to work with all kinds of furry and four-legged friends or any pets for that matter. Uh, now, Ewan, let's kind of just jump right into this. You're a pet photographer. What made you uh, decide to work with pets as opposed to maybe people? Um just that I didn't like posing people um, and interacting with people always found quite difficult but you don't need to worry about that pet with pets you just run with it you don't have to think as much about hand position you just as long as the dogs are happy and content you can make a good picture you don't need to worry about all the wee details as much and okay. trying to get people to relax in front of the camera I was never too good okay. at that okay uh, now, how about in, this, in general with photography? How did you kind of get started with photography? Was it something you always knew you wanted to do or? Um, no, I've actually got a mathematics degree. Um, when we first got our boxer puppy 10 years ago, um, I wanted to learn to photograph him and it just all developed from there. And I moved on to photographing dogs at the rescue, at the shelter, then gradually it became a business. Okay, so you actually got a, you got a degree in mathematics, but now you're photographing pets. Quite a, different, <laughs> quite a different perspective, but obviously you're very happy doing what you're doing here. Uh, when, we're looking, when we're looking at pet photography, do you think this is a, a growing field of photography? Uh... Yeah, definitely. The last couple of years, um, there's a lot more springing up, so there's much, much more pet photographers around. My business mm -hmm. the last year and a half has just really taken off. So now okay. my diary is full for three and four months in advance, and it's there's always inquiries every day. It's really good. Um, it's definitely growing. Okay, and do you think that this trend will continue over the next few years, five, ten years, that it'll just continue to grow? I think so. Um, especially with social media, people are becoming more invested in pets and lifestyle, lifestyle of the pets. Mm -hmm. So from having nice collars and jumpers and things. To the photography, doggy daycare, grooming, it's all, it's all growing, it's all becoming more popular and there's more businesses all the time. Okay, so let, let me ask that actually, is, is social media, is that a very, like how important is social media to like the success of a professional pet photographer? I think it's very important, it's, everybody likes pictures of pets and maybe people would comment on a picture of a baby or a couple getting married mm -hmm. but everybody likes commenting on cute dogs, so it's something mm -hmm. that people relate to and like to share and be involved in. Whereas maybe mm -hmm. they wouldn't do that to a couple support rate. They'd, mm -hmm. they'd leave a comment and say how cute it is. And plus the whole Insta pet, Insta famous yeah. is becoming quite a thing. So okay. most dogs I photograph, they've actually got their own pet and their own Instagram. Oh wow. Oh, wow. So it's quite a thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, who doesn't like a cute picture of a dog or a cat? <laughs> Especially a puppy or a kitten as well, too. Uh, so now, a lot of people, again, a lot of people like uh, pets and a lot of people might like animals and they might even be a photographer or something. Or, or there might be an aspiring pet photographer out there, but, but they might be hesitant to kind of go full pro uh, as a pet photographer because they worry that it might not bring them uh, a substantial enough or a consistent income to sustain themselves as a professional pet photographer. Uh, but how do you feel? Do you feel that pet photography is kind of a large enough, a substantial enough field of photography to support uh, professional photographers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the business the last year has been consistently busy. Um, currently I'm booked out for four months in advance. So my diary is full for four months and that's doing it full time. Mm -hmm. So we live in quite a small town in Scotland. Okay. And there's two, okay. there's two full-time pet photographers in this town, and we're both really busy. So, if a small, a small town in Scotland can sustain two professional pet photographers, it's definitely a market that's there's enough business there for, and people okay. are willing to spend money. Yeah. And while we're on this idea of kind of marketing and getting clients with uh, pet photographers, you know, wedding photographers, they have like the wedding expos that everybody knows about, their bridal shows, 
you know, a lot of events that are publicized. Uh, maternity newborn photographers have things, you know, like bridal showers or newborn shows. Uh, what are some events or places that pet photographers can take advantage of to help get their name out there and connect with potential clients? And um, there's the bigger events, so they, they're starting to bring in ones for dogs now, like the, the bridal shows. They do things mm -hmm. like that for dogs. Um, oh, okay. There's lots of fun days. So mm -hmm. the rescues run fun days, so they'll have lots of people come along to do stalls and um, there's gala days, so the, all the towns will put on a gala day and they'll have stands and they'll have dog shows. It's, it's quite big and dog shows like um, the kennel club shows, things like these, mm -hmm. there's lots of big shows you can take advantage of. So it's quite Very similar right. to weddings that there, there is shows specifically for the pet market because it is getting mm -hmm. that big. Okay, and as you say, it's, it's growing kind of and growing and growing. Uh, kind of in general for uh, a photographer, somebody looking to get into pet photography, what, what is some advice that you would give to them to help them get kind of a jump start on their photography business? There's stuff outside of the pet photography, so you need to understand dogs. Um, it's not easy. Um, dogs will do their own thing, so you need to have a good understanding of body language and just dog behavior. So doing things mm -hmm. with pet, pet photography, so learning about behavior is really important because mm -hmm. dogs, they very rarely just sit and do as they're told. So you need mm -hmm. to learn about that because that'll really aid your business. Um, mm -hmm. Working with shelters and dog rescues is really helpful. Um, it lets you practice and they'll share the images to promote the dogs and that gets your name out there as well. And connecting with other dog businesses, so um, working with the local groomers, um, maybe inviting them in to have their, their own dogs photographed, mm. then you mm. can have your artwork placed in their groomers, their salon, and that really helps. If, if it's their own dogs, they're much more likely to talk about it to clients. And if they've had the full experience, then they're invested in your business, and that really helps. So, mm. um, Well, those are some great tips. Those are some, uh, some excellent tips that you just gave out. And uh, I see we're, we're really kind of focusing on dogs. Every now and then we'll kind of throw in cats. But do you find that there's a specific pet that's kind of generally most commonly photographed uh, as a pet photographer? Kind of Are dogs more commonly asked to be photographed than other pets and animals? Or does it kind of vary? Um, I think it's either dogs or horses. Um, horses mm -hmm. are quite big as well. So I think mm -hmm. dogs and horses are the main two markets. Um, mm -hmm. Things like cats. I've got a bit of a mind of their own, so okay. I think cat owners are maybe a bit more reluctant to get them photographed because they don't okay. know how well it will go. Um, mm -hmm. There's dogs generally have a basic level of obedience, so you can tell them to sit and they'll sit. Whereas a cat, a cat's going to do what a cat's going to do, so <laughs> it's harder to make a cat stay still for the photograph. And to bring them to the studio could be quite stressful. Okay. So a lot of cat owners wouldn't think about bringing them into a studio so that puts them off okay so definitely dogs is the big thing and okay obviously there's equine photographers as well that do really well okay and even you were kind of saying even from the photographer perspective that dogs tend to be the easiest clients to work with more so than cats yeah um, dogs can be difficult as well um, <laughs> there's no two dogs that do the same thing it's mm -hmm. all about trying to work out what works for the individual dog, so you need to be quite adaptable because okay. uh -huh. some of the dogs are nervous about the equipment or maybe they're not uh -huh. too good with people, so you can uh -huh. be a bit shy and it, it just takes a bit of time to get to know what, what works for the individual dog. Okay. Uh, what, what are some things that you do to try and, uh, when you get a pet, whether it's a dog or a cat or even a horse, it's the first time they've done any kind of photography. What are some kind of things that you might do to get them comfortable? I'm sure you, do you, you don't just start taking pictures, do you? What are some things you do to help them get comfortable and relaxed? Um, when they come in, I ignore them. I don't interact with them at all. I'm what? really quite quiet um, and calm. A lot of dogs don't like people being in their face. So if you were to go across, oh, what a nice little doggy, it could be quite intimidating for the dog. So it's best just to let them have their own space and let them come to you when they want to. Or if they don't want to come to you, just leave them. Um, there's no point of trying to force contact with them because it can scare them. And mm -hmm. hot dogs, 
I use hot dogs in the studio for dogs. They love them. So if the dog's a bit nervous, I'll throw some hot dogs on the floor and let the dog take the hot dogs. And eventually they usually come to me, but I, don't, I never force interactions with them. I let them do things at their own pace. So it's just about giving them space. So allowing them to get comfortable, it sounds like, you know, just being very patient in the whole process. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, some people kind of, they're naturally good with animals. It, it sounds like this is kind of important. It's an important aspect to have as a pet photographer. But do you think that this is something that can be learned uh, for people to be comfortable with animals and know how to uh, handle animals and pets in different situations? Or is it kind of a natural thing? It's, it's a bit of both. Um, you need to have that love of animals. You can't do this unless you mm -hmm. love dogs or animals mm -hmm. in general. Um, mm -hmm. But you do learn little tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. And I think just um, the whole thing about just giving them space and being quiet and calm is just such a big thing. And it makes such a difference to how you interact with the dogs. So mm -hmm. it's just about giving them space and time. And the more you do it, the more little tips and tricks you build, it, build up. Mm -hmm. and I think. Being able to recognize body language is really important. So if a dog's really uncomfortable, it's being able to recognize that and give them space. And that's all things mm -hmm. you can learn. Um, some dogs do struggle in the studio and you need to give them that space. And some dogs aren't really good with people. So wow. I think if you're, there's some dogs you could probably push a bit too far, wow. um, which is not good for their well-being or your safety. I think some dogs could give you a bite if you push oh. them too far. Mm -hmm. So you need, you need to recognize when dogs are struggling and when it's maybe a bit too much for them. There's, okay. there's nothing wrong with saying, maybe this isn't for them and letting mm -hmm. them, maybe just deciding the session is not really gonna work for them in the studio. But most dogs, I don't have a problem with. We, we find a way of working with them. But I think mm -hmm. it's been smart and just recognizing that the dog's happy. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever gotten any injuries from any uh, no, no, sessions? <laughs> I think okay. I know enough not to get myself in trouble. Okay. And again, is there any uh, is there any kind of uh, course or class or book or two that you might recommend for people to get a, to get uh, more comfortable with animal behavior, like dog behavior or something like this, so they can recognize some of these signs and uh, signals of, of pets? Um, nothing off the top of my head, but um, there's. There's lots of dog trainers and dog clubs mm -hmm. around, so this could be an idea of reaching out to the local dog club and asking mm -hmm. if you can maybe come along, have a chat with them and see mm -hmm. how they can help you out. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of really good books as well. Um, none that mm -hmm. spring to mind at the moment, unfortunately. Sure, no problem. But for you, you, again, you're kind of saying that learning about how to handle different animals or if you want to choose a specific one, that's just about as important as taking like a photography you know, course for pet photographers. Mm -hmm. Working with um, shelters or rescues is really good mm -hmm. because a lot of dogs in shelters will be quite nervous. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn to give them space. So mm -hmm. working with a shelter, you get, you'll get a v v wide variety of dogs. You'll get dogs that are happy-go-lucky and you'll mm -hmm. get the ones that are a bit nervous or a bit shy of people. And you get, okay. you get to learn how to interact with them. It's really good. Okay. Uh, and I want to ask this question straight on. It is, um, is it wise for a pet photographer to kind of specialize or focus on one specific uh, type of animal or pet? Or is it better just to kind of advertise as any, any kind of pet photographer? And there's always a benefit in specifying um, being into one animal. It's just mm. you also learn how they work better than doing mm. a wide variety. But I think a lot of the key skills are the same, mm. just that patience and Mm -hmm. Adaptability, you need to, with your lighting and stuff in the studio, the dogs don't tend to stay still. The same with other animals, they, they, they'll move, mm -hmm. so you can't you often have perfect lighting the way you would with a, a human model that you'd have stood in one spot. So you need mm -hmm. to be quite adaptable in everything you do, really. And it, it works across the whole spectrum, whether it's a bird or a lizard. Mm -hmm. you, you pick up the same sort of skills from dogs. Obviously, you can maybe read dogs a bit better than what you could a bird or a lizard if you're more used to dogs, but you do pick up skills and you can work with most animals. Mm -hmm. 
What are what are some animals that you have uh, worked with? You've worked with dogs, you work with cats, horses. You said lizards and mm -hmm. a pig. Had a pig in a micro wow. pig. He's really <laughs> cute. Yeah, that's important. We... Sorry, on you go. Okay. We kind of established that dogs tend to be more or less the easiest type. What about the most difficult? Are cats the most difficult or maybe parrots? I can imagine parrots can be. Um, cats. Cats are difficult. Okay. Um, it's quite, I don't know if you can hear the noise, but it's quite noisy in the studio. The, the road's quite loud. So things okay. like um, motorbikes can scare them. Mm -hmm. So we had one cat, the mo a motorbike revved up and the mm -hmm. cat spent the whole rest of the session hiding in the back. Oh no. And once, once you lose a cat, you, you can't really get them back into the session. They're, they're quite dif difficult to entice back in. So mm -hmm. if something happens to scare them, it's almost impossible to get them back into the session. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. uh, now, is, is a studio necessary? Uh, you have a studio, but is it necessary for a pet photographer to kind of have success or can they do it kind of on location? And um, there's lots of pet photographers that do, locate, well, more dog photographers that do location and they're really mm -hmm. successful. Um, it's difficult in Scotland because of the weather. Mm -hmm. Obviously, pit plays a part in it. I had to cancel the shoot, shoot today because of the weather outside. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it depends on your location and you might have to do more work during the summer when the weather is more reliable mm -hmm. and to save up for the winter when it's going to be more difficult. But mm -hmm. you can do um, sort of smaller setups in people's home for studio stuff. So you can do mm -hmm. portable studio sessions as well as ha actually having a physical studio. Mm -hmm. um, I actually use quite a small setup for my studio work. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you'd be able to put into somebody's house in quite a small oh. space if you wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's lots of ways around not having a physical studio. And okay. some people quite enjoy doing location work because they feel it's more natural. Mm -hmm. And some dog owners as well, they like the dogs out running and playing. So it's definitely doable. Okay. I want to stay on the business kind of uh, the business side of things for a second now. Uh, and do you find that there is a certain like sales strategy that is particular, particularly successful with pet photography more than others? Or kind of like, how do you market uh, and sell your business? Um, one of the things that really sells for me is the fact that people have fun when they come in here. Mm -hmm. So I start getting referrals from the moment people leave the studio before they even see the images. They're already telling their friends that they had such a good time in the studio. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people think that it's going to be quite stressful, but they, they in fact have lots of fun and that sells the business for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not much of a salesperson. So for me, okay. having nice samples that sell themselves is a big thing. I can't, I'm not a salesperson. I'll never be one of these type of people that can upsell easily. Um, okay. So it's the images and the products that sell themselves. I'm not, mm -hmm. it's not something I'm particularly comfortable doing. Okay. But, yeah. Well, and having fun, come on, don't downplay that. Everybody loves to have fun. <laughs> pets and animal, uh, pets and humans, uh, both as well. Uh, so you mentioned samples. I wanted to go here next to print uh, and printed products. Uh, is, is this an important feature for a successful photography business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's also where, where you make most of your money as mm -hmm. in-person sales, selling products. Mm -hmm. it's, it's made a huge difference to my business, you know, to have the studio and have people come and see the samples and come see the images. Mm -hmm. Before I was just doing galleries online and oh. I'd almost got no sales maybe one or two sales the whole time doing galleries. But now that everybody comes back to see the products and see the images, every, every session leads to sales. So it's made a world of difference. Wow, so there's really been a dramatic correlation between you going from online presentation to printed in-person presentation and your, your sales numbers and sales consistency. That's, that's tremendous. Uh, is it, are there particular print products, like one, two, or a few, that uh, you find sell really well for you? And um, folio boxes sell really well. I think it's because um, a lot of time people can't, they struggle to choose between the images. And mm -hmm. if they've got a folio box, they've got the 20 images printed in the folio box, and they find, they think it's really good value. Um, mm -hmm. So they get to take 20 beautifully printed images home with them, whereas mm -hmm. they might you know, only be able to afford one piece of wall art. So having 
the option to buy 20 prints and a really nice package mm -hmm. is people love that so that's a big thing for oh. me I'm, i like selling yeah, yeah. all the boxes that's a good point too they're not having to choose but otherwise wall arts you, you seem to be are a big thing for you like canvases and things like that yeah canvases and frames um i don't sell too many albums um i don't know if it's because i do a lot of studio stuff i don't know if people maybe like location shoots and albums it's always been location shoots that I've sold in the albums. Mm -hmm. But photo boxes, I sell a lot of them for the studio shoots. Um, okay. Frames as well. They do okay. really good. Uh, in a year, do you typically average like 50-50 studio and on location? Or are you kind of more on location, more more in studio? Uh... Probably 90% studio. Okay. Um, I think just the weather's really, doesn't really work for location a lot of the time. Yeah, so okay. during the summer, summer really, yeah, the weather yeah. is not, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> it's uh, quite difficult. <laughs> okay. We're doing a lot of talk about print, and uh, you kind of spelled this out already when you talked about going from online to printed products, but what is your opinion about digital products? Do they have kind of a place in pet photography? Can somebody hope to be successful using digital products in pet photography? Um, yeah, I, I don't know how long how will how sustainable it will be long term. Um, I think there's probably a price point where you can reach selling a session with digitals. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are happy to, to spend, say, just a, a sitting fee. So they, they spend a sitting fee and they don't get anything with it. And they're happy to come back and buy products on top of it. But I think if you're just giving them the session and X amount of digitals, I think there's probably a limit to how much they'd be willing to pay in advance. I think once they come back and see the images and they mm -hmm. see the wall art and they see the print boxes and albums, then I think they're willing to spend more money than they would be just doing the session in digitals in advance. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're trying to sell to them from an, an online gallery, it's just, it's not going to work because they can't see the products. They can't see how beautiful the wall art is and how good the quality of the print is online it just the price just doesn't make sense to them mm -hmm. if they're not seeing the actual products i think you hit the nail on the head i think that's i think that makes a lot of sense and who, who says you're not a good upseller that was fantastic you know you go you see the products and all of a sudden you you want more uh, as opposed to just seeing something digital or something something online uh, so if we come back to printing uh what do you think is important to consider when deciding on a printing lab to work with? Um, I think one of the big things with print labs is when it goes wrong. Because it always does at some point, it doesn't matter how good the print lab is, there's always going to be a mistake or something's going to get damaged in post. I think one of the big things is how they deal with it. So for me, if the print lab recognizes the mistake straight away and replaces the product straight away without too much hassle, then that's a big thing. Because there is always going to be errors. It doesn't matter how good the print lab is, there's always the occasional, always, as long as it's not happening too often, there's always going to be some problems. Then, like customer service is the big thing, how quickly they'll deal with problems, as well as just the quality of the finished products, a big thing as well. But I think, especially with Info, they've always been really good customer service, everything's just been dealt with really quickly. And there hasn't, I think I've had one problem the whole time I've been using them, and everything's sort of straight away. And every print lab I've used, there's always been something wrong at some point. So it's not like, so how, how quick it gets fixed is the big thing. Okay, so this is the customer service is the big thing. How they handle those moments that go wrong. That's the biggest key in your opinion. Also, the, the quality of the products matters as well. Mm -hmm. um, the colors, making sure the colors are always consistent is a good thing, mm -hmm. um, which is big. Yeah, just consistency and customer service is a big thing. Okay. We talked about how print products uh, are really the key to having a successful career uh, as a pet photographer, well more so than if you just use digital. Uh, but the world in general is getting more uh, and more digital. I think there's no way around it. Uh, are you concerned at all about this? Are you worried that it might creep into pet photography and people might not be as uh, you know, desired to have a print product? Um, one of the ways I deal with that is I only sell digitals if they're buying 
a folio box or an album box set, so they need to buy a print product. Um, so at least I can control one. They've got one nice product, so mm -hmm. something they can actually physically touch and look at. And it's a good representation of my work. They're not just going to get prints printed cheaply elsewhere. They've mm -hmm. actually got something that's beautifully done. So if they want to buy digitals, they need to buy it with either a folio box or an album set. That's how I work it anyway. Well, that's a great idea to kind of package it together. Uh, now, Yuni, it's been great. I want to give one last question before we sign off. Uh, now, what is one kind of thing you've learned or one piece of advice that you kind of keep coming back to that you would like to share with other professional photographers that can really help them elevate their, their business and their craft? Um, I think you need to show your personality. So whether it's your website or your social media, I think you need to show who you are and your personality. Because people are invested in you nowadays. They trust, mm -hmm. they want to trust that you're gonna be good with their dog or good with their kid or that you really care about their wedding. Mm -hmm. They need to know that they need to know you. So I think you need to share who you are online. Um, and I think it's let everybody have fun in the studio. So make the sessions fun. And even if it's a really hard shoot and nothing's going your way, I think you've got to laugh and joke. Because if, if they feel as if, if you go back to pets, if they feel like their dog's really difficult, then they might, you might lose them. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they think he's having fun, he's enjoying the session, it's okay. It really makes such a difference. And if they have fun, they'll recommend you to people. So I think having fun, laughing and smiling, even if you're dying inside and it's going horribly wrong, just keep <laughs> laughing and smiling. And people will appreciate that. And they will come back because of that. I think that's my big two takeaways. I, I think that's tremendous advice. And I think it's equally as valuable for human subjects too, especially with children, but even adults, they can, you can sense things too. Wonderful, wonderful advice, uh, Ewan. Thank you so much for your time. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Uh, once again, I was here with Ewan Chen of Muttley Snaps Professional Pet Photography Studios located in Falkirk, Scotland. Thank you all for tuning in and be sure to keep checking in as we'll have more wonderful content coming your way very shortly. I'm Eugene Nagovietsky and Photo Studios. Take care.